Well, here on the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, we love catching places you could see from those previous clips. And one of the best rigs is a straight inline flasher rig. It's really easy to make. I make mine out of plastic teaspoons. Does it get any cheaper than that? Not really. And this is how I do it. Okay, these are a sort of traditional metal spoon, which you can buy and you can make up splitting either end. Uh, and use those on your trace up trace of the hook because that's what place like a little bit of flash a little bit of bling I have used those I have caught on those but again they're I guess some form of metal or aluminium a little bit heavy in a slow tidal condition because the tide is going to make it turn around and around and around spin so what I've discovered I've used and I had some good success on over the years are these shiny silver things and they are if you can recognize them I turn around that way Plastic picnic tablespoons. That's all they are. Obviously the handle came up here. I've cut it off. I've filed around here. I've drilled a hole through here. This is a smaller size. One is a tablespoon. There you can see one is a teaspoon here. And I tend to put the bigger spoon at the back of the trays and the smaller spoon further up. So I'm going to make a two hook down tide flasher rig. This is what I do. Just a straight a uh, piece of say 15 to 25 pound length of nylon I've made this about say six feet long um, I quite like the heavier line it doesn't tangle so easily and I'm going to use some swivels here so we start at the top end I'm going to put the swivel on and make the trace up and show you the whole rig dead easy to do and of course you can't have that bling without working with some beads in there in fact you're going to need beads to make these spoons actually spin let's put that one away hook size is going to be using a size one hook there just a regular size one sort of aberdeen size that's ideal for place don't need a big hook it's going to be using worms for bait so that's about what you need so let's tie this swivel on the end first i am actually when i'm tying this not just a regular tuck plug not i'm actually steering more towards heavier mon mono I really from my experiments find that the fish don't really they don't really I think it's anglers that think I've got to use really small stuff really fine like 10 pound leader and stuff like that so I'm starting there with a swivel and six feet trace in the middle let's say there I'm going to tie in um, a blood dropper which is a circle it's in our how to tie fishing knots to, it's basically like a four turn loop that you tuck back in on itself if you look up in our playlist video playlist there's I think two quite long films on knots pulls down like this there we go that's tight then what I'm going to do is snip the I'm going to call it the upstream one that one okay stroke it out just heats up the nylon and takes any kinks out of it okay so now onto that I'm putting a bead either side before I tie the hook on a bead either side of this so let's go doesn't matter what color bead just going to slide a bead up like that then I'm going to put the small teaspoon on there okay now I'm putting it how can I describe this so here's the current here's the seabed you know everything's flowing this way the tide i want to make sure that that scoop the scoop effect of the spoon is caught by the tide okay so what i'm going to do is slide that in through the base of the handle and it should hang put it about the right way shall i with the bowl shape like that the bowl shaped towards the top of the tide so the bowl actually gets the bulk of the current there to turn it over then I get the other bead. So either side of that, look, you should be able to see that now. Plastic teaspoon, bead bead, dig a hook out here. You can use smaller hooks, you can use bigger hooks. If you get bigger hooks, I find you use, tend to use, you'll be drawn towards a bigger bait. And of course, then you're going to be getting the bite striking and probably missing them. So think of a place with its mouth or even a flounder or a dab, anything like that, 
they don't exactly have a big mouth do they so you don't want to use anything too big I snip the tag in down leaving a few millimeters sticking up so that is the upstream end of it you can see here so that can flash around like this the bait's going to be coming to here and I've got that one pretty well yeah, it does that that's what it does in the tide I've got that one pretty well touching the hook okay so this to me is a sort of bonus one the other one I'm going to tie on the end I'm going to space it so that the spoon the larger tablespoon size is up here away from the hook I found about four inches for place the place are attracted to the flash going along the bottom nobody really knows whether they what they see the flash as whether they see that as a fish trying to escape or they see that as another small baby flatfish that's you know around the, the seabed the mussel beds and then the worms behind it and they come up to look at the flash and then they see the worm behind I think that's what it is so What a show, I mean, we leave everything in this one, we don't bother editing it out if we, if we can help it. So I've got my bead on there, so I've got about four inches, and then what I'm going to do is go through there twice. Now you can use a rubber band in there, you could tie a knot, but I see I just tied a, I've gone through the bead, get it nearly, ah, oh, there you got it there. Twice, so the bead is now locked on there. Then I'll put my spoon on, like that, so it spins. You see it spinning really easily, plastic tablespoons. Then the other one, but the other one also has to be locked into position. So you're going to need a little bit of a gap there. Let's see if I can get that through. So that you can get that end of the nylon back through the hole in the bead. Got it. And then pull the bead up fairly tight there. Now... I don't want it so tight that it can't move. Don't put it really tight, it pinches. You definitely want it so this spoon is going to revolve in the tide, okay? Then I'll get my hook. Bear in mind, most place fishing is done either with a small strip bait, a, a fillet of sand eel, or a worm. Again, just tie the hook on the bottom. I find three to four inches is about right. Some people use it longer, some people put loads of beads on. There we go. Now, you can put beads all the way up here. I sort of, I agree with that if you're not fishing with a flasher. If you're fishing with a flasher, do you, you know, they're gonna see this, look, more than a, look at the size of the bead there. Now, if that was down on the hook, a little bunch of them like that, would it make any difference? Maybe if you don't have flashers, use beads? Certainly, certainly, they like a bit of bling the place. But when that thing's, Look, whizzing around in the tide, flopping around like this. That's all you need. And about that distance, maybe you want to, about four inches for the worm. It's bumping along the bottom, flashing and spinning like this. And that's what attracts a fish. Up the other end, let's say, oh, let's get a piece of nylon on here. I'm going to make this into my real line, which will say 20, 30 pounds. Just imagine it's your real line. I need something to lower it down and stop it tangled up if you drop it down quickly. It's one of these. Here we go. You use small ones. Well, this is quite big actually for place fishing, but let's listen, I've caught place on it, don't worry, it's not a problem. A smaller version of that if you want, but this is just a regular standard. I don't think they call them zip sliders or what they call these. It's a boom, so that there is just an inch gap there, so that when you lower it down, this line, the trace line, doesn't do this, doesn't spin up. This is all for beginners. If you're an expert, obviously, you know, you've gone off to watch something else. But for beginners, they want to learn something. You don't want that effect. So this boom stops that. This is your real line, if you can imagine it, tied on to the swivel. Much easier and self-explanatory when I show you the whole rig. Very, very handy. Easy to, to knock a few of these up. Because if you're bumping along the bottom, with uh, your baits across muscle beds sooner or later you're going to lose a set of gear so what you do is make it up like that now there we go we're going to clip a lead on that as well they've got nice little clips on the bottom of these which are dead handy you can change weight sizes the thing with places you want just enough lead weight to bump along the bottom at an angle you don't want like a big one pound two pound lead banging up and down like this vertically you want the line back at an angle and it's just bumping it's just tripping along the bottom like that 
So here's the rig, here's my reel line, matching my fishing rods up there, and I'm lowering this down to the seabed. Obviously the lead hits first. That boom there stops it all tangling, and it's running boom, so you can slide like this. And then the rest of the rig is back here. Hey, two feet, two feet six back is the first teaspoon flasher. And then this is the one I would normally catch on. The bigger one is the tablespoon flasher with a worm bait, maybe a worm stroke, squid strip, sand hill strip, mackerel strip, combo. Combo baits are very good for place. There you go. That's the old place rig of the moment with plastic made tea tablespoons. Don't forget to watch the Totally Awesome Fishing Show and keep a lookout for the free download of our magazine, The Awesome Angler. We'll see you next time, round and about, the river, the bank, the, the sea, the beach, the boat, the rocks, with some more fishing tips. Meanwhile, I'm going to knock a few more of these up, because it's coming up place time. <laughs>